Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for SNCF France and Germany. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full four-player game today. Before I go into that, I do want to ask that if you enjoyed this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and get access to a ton of exclusive perks, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. Some of those perks include watching my Over 100 Opinions episodes, where I talk about the things I like, don't like, and give updated opinions for all of the games that I play. You can also watch some of my videos early and advertisement free and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs, including those opinions episodes I just mentioned. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching it, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please leave a comment about that down below. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. One other thing to quickly mention is the fact that these colored cubes do not come with the game. I'm instead using them to better differentiate between the players as we proceed through the game. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Out here, we have a map of France, and I do want to point out that on the flip side of this board, there is a Germany map, which does have a couple different rules, and I'll give an overview for that at the end of this video. Now, the goal of the game is to get the most points, and the way we do that as investors is we are going to take these cubes in the six different railroad companies and place them out as track along this board, and we have the option of selling our stock to buy more stock. Now, the idea is that we want more stock in the most lucrative companies, and each company's value will increase as it connects to more and more of these cities. At the end of the game, each stock that we have, which are these cubes, are worth victory points equal to the victory point value for that company. For example, if purple ended the game at 15, then we would get 15 times 3, or 45 points, just for these three purple cubes. Now, you may have noticed that our opponents have these shields in front of them. Technically, we should have one of those as well, because in this game, our stock portfolios are secret. In addition to that, our portfolios started out randomly. In a four-player game, each player randomly draws eight stocks and we put them behind our screens, and only after we've done that do we put the rest of the cubes down here into the supply. We are playing as the purple player, which is why we don't have a screen over here. We'll just have to imagine that these opponents cannot see what we have over here. Now that was a high-level overview of what we're doing, and I'll explain how all this works in detail while we're playing, and I think let's jump into it. As I mentioned, we are going to play as the purple player, and we randomly got this locomotive token, and that means we are the starting player. This token will stay with us for the entire game, and at the end of the game, it will break ties with the person furthest clockwise away from us being in a stronger position than we are. So let's now take the first turn of the game, and on our turn, we can either build track in any one of the companies that has cubes in its box, or we can sell one of our stocks to then take one or two other stocks. Now, as I mentioned, each of us randomly got a portfolio of these stocks, and in this case, we have three purple, two yellow, one blue, one red, and one black. Now, we can kind of tell what our opponents have by looking down here to see the gaps. Each company has 32 cubes that can be used as stock or as tracks, and one cube from each of these companies starts out on the board. Now, when we look at these boxes, we can see that for purple, there are nine stocks that have been taken by the players. We have three of them, but there are six more mixed between our three opponents. For red, there's only four stocks held by players. For black, there are seven. For green, there's only two held by players. Yellow has six. And finally, blue has four. So we can look to these gaps to get a rough idea of where our opponents might be. Of course, we have no idea how these have been dispersed among them. One thing I do know is that a lot of people have purple, including us. Now, we do start with two yellow, and there are only six yellow out there. I feel like maybe we'll begin by building with the yellow railroad. Now, when we do a build action, we select one of these railroads that has at least one cube in its box, and then we're going to place one to five of these cubes out on the map. I think we'll go big. We'll put five of these cubes down. Now, each time we add a cube, it has to go into a hex that is adjacent to a hex that already has a cube of that railroad. That means this first cube can go into any of these three spaces. Each time a cube is placed into a city, the victory point value for that company is going to increase depending on the color of the city that was placed into. Playing into this city is yellow, and yellow cities are worth one point. So by putting that there, yellow railroad stocks are now worth one point each. 
we have four more tracks that we can place down, and I think we will. Now we have new options. We can go next to this newly placed cube, but we don't have to. We could go next to a different yellow cube that was placed already, and out on the board, there are two different types of hexes. The beige hexes without names on them are rural, and each rural hex can have two cubes. They do have to be different colors, though. The other spaces that have names on them are all cities, and cities can only have one cube placed on them. I think we'll put our second cube into that rural space. Our third cube will go there into a yellow city, increasing the victory points by one. We have two cubes remaining. Again, we don't have to place all these, but I think it's fun too. We're going to put this one there, and then lastly, we'll go into another yellow city. So by putting those five cubes down, we've increased the value of the yellow railroad by three victory points. We have two stock in the yellow company, so each of these is now worth three victory points if we still have them at the end of the game. We do have the option of selling these to buy different stocks, and I'll explain how that works relatively soon. The last thing to mention about building right now is you are not allowed to lay track so that any railroad company is locked out of leaving Paris. Remember, each of these rural spaces can have two cubes in it, and if, for example, two cubes were placed onto this rural space and two cubes were placed onto that rural space, then the purple railroad would not be able to leave Paris, and that is illegal. So whichever of these two potential placements happens last is not actually a legal play. Well, we finished building, and that means our turn is done, and play will move clockwise over here to the yellow player. Once again, on their turn, they can either build or they can sell a stock and then buy stock, and it looks like yellow does want to sell and then buy. They've taken a blue stock from their portfolio behind their screen, and this has to be added back into the railroad box that matches the color. And now they can take one or two stocks from a single railroad company that is not the company they just sold stock into. Considering we made a big move with yellow right at the start, they've decided they're going to take two yellow stock, and both of these will be placed behind their screen. Now remember, each player started with eight random stocks in this four-player game, and since the yellow player got rid of one stock and then gained two, that means they now have nine stocks behind their screen. They did not have to take two, though. They could have just taken one. You do have to sell exactly one stock and then buy exactly one or two stocks, putting them back behind your screen. So yellow is done, and now blue can go, and they've decided to build with the Blue Railroad. Yellow just sold a stock of the Blue Railroad, so it looks like they did not have confidence in this railroad company, but the blue player does. This means they have to build at least one cube as track onto the board. Remember, they could build up to five of these. I do want to again emphasize that if there are no cubes in the railroad box, then you cannot build with that railroad. They have decided to place five cubes down. They'll start going here. Then they're going to place two of these down, each going into a yellow city. Yellow cities add one victory point, so the blue railroad is now worth two. And then they've decided to build into each of these rural hexes. They could have built over here to increase the value of the blue railroad more, but it looks like they're trying to set up for a more southern route in the near future. That's five cubes, so they can't place any more, and that also means their turn is done. Next up, the red player can go, and they've decided to build with the green railroad. Remember, there's only two green cubes that have been dealt out to the players. So this tells us that red has at least one of those two green cubes. Otherwise, I'm sure they'd be doing something different. They're going to place five as well. And they'll start with one, two, three. That increases the points by one. And then they'll go for five. As you can see, this city they just built in has a purple background, and those are worth two victory points each. So by building there, green increases its value by two more victory points. Once again, every city can only have one cube in it, and I think they wanted to get green over here before yellow was able to get over there instead. Of course, purple is here and could have made that happen if it had been built on this turn, but that is not what ended up happening here. Well, red is done, and that means we get to go again. Once again, we can either build track, or we could sell one of our stocks to buy one or two of a different stock. I do like what happened over here with the Green Railroad. It's pretty close to some other high-value cities. This city over here is red, and that's worth three victory points. So if green worked its way along the top, that could be very lucrative. That being said, we do have three purple, and so far everyone is ignoring that railroad. That's probably because we can tell a lot of purple stocks are owned. So if we do something good with purple, we're likely helping somebody else out, but maybe nobody else has three of them, so we'd be helping ourselves out more. I do also like what's happening with the blue railroad. It's one, two, three, four spaces away from hitting all three of these cities, which would increase its victory points by four. It's also getting close to another red city. 
Now, before we make our decision, I'd like to talk about how the game ends. There are two end game conditions, and we technically check each of them at the end of every player's turn. If either are hit, then the game ends immediately after that player's turn, and we move into final scoring. The first condition is if five out of these six railroad boxes are completely empty of cubes. The second condition is if any railroad builds into Marseille down here. This is the only blue colored city and it's worth four victory points for the railroad that gets there. So hypothetically, we could keep building the blue railroad quickly and end this game very fast. Again, once either trigger happens, the game ends immediately after that player's turn, and then we reveal all of our stocks, and every one of these cubes is worth victory points equal to the victory point value of the associated railroad company. Then whoever has the most points wins, and if there is a tie, then the person furthest clockwise away from us, because we're the starting player, is going to break the tie in their favor. For our turn, I think we're going to sell a stock and then buy. I think purple is not looking very good for us. We can see other railroads have already been built next to it. Of course, it can escape Paris because each of these rural hexes can hold at most two cubes. But again, it doesn't seem like people are that interested in building it. Of course, we are one of those people making this decision. I don't love having three of them at this point. I think let's sell one purple, putting it back into the railroad box. And now we can see that green and yellow are worth the same amount. But looking to the future... I think I like greens prospects more. Also, we know there were a lot less greens randomly dealt out at the start of the game, which means if we buy some green and then build green track, we're helping less people, unless everybody decides to buy into green, in which case we might change our plan. Now, we can buy one or two stock from a single company, and I think we'll go with green. We could take just one, but let's go with two. We put those into our portfolio, and we actually have a cube in every single color at this point. I'm sure it will not stay that way as we proceed through the game. Now, I did mention final scoring just a minute ago, but there's one thing I did not add in, and that has to do with the maximum cube amounts. When we focus down here, we can see the initial number of random cubes we got based on the player count, and we can see the maximum number of cubes that we can score based on the player count. It's worth noting this information also shows up on the back of each of the player shields. Now again, I mentioned this is the maximum number of cubes that we score. In a four-player game, that's 15, and you can go over 15. However, every cube that you have in excess of the maximum will cost you 20 points. So you do have to be careful selling one stock and taking two. If you do this too much too early, you might find yourself in a situation where you would rather get a bunch of other stock in the mid to late game, but that would push you over this maximum. And sometimes that is still worth it. If getting a stock over the maximum will increase your portfolio by at least 20, then it may be worth it. Well, we are done with our turn, which means yellow can go. They've decided to build track, and they're going to do it with the Black Railroad. After thinking about it, they are going to place four track going in a line out here, and then they're only going to place into one city. It's a yellow city, so it increases the victory point value by one. It's not a very lucrative build for victory points, but it does posture them to be in a pretty good position to maybe try to get out here to the three victory point red city. There's also a purple one there and there, and a decent amount of other yellow cities here. Another red city there, essentially putting some pressure on the blue railroad as well. Yellow is done, which means blue can go. They've decided to build, and they're going to do it with the Red Railroad. Red started here, and I do want to mention that the initial positions for each of these railroad companies is randomized at the start of the game, and then they are placed around Paris. They'll start by placing one here. The second one will go onto this rural hex. They share it with the Yellow Railroad, and no other cubes can be placed onto that hex. They can build up to three more, and they're going to do that. They'll put one here, and then two onto Yellow Cities. That increases the victory point value for the Red Railroad by two. So it's up to two. And at this point, the only railroad not built yet is purple. I wonder if it'll get built at all. It's entirely possible that it won't. Well, that does finish blue's turn, which means red can go now. And they're going to build with the Black Railroad. Now, they considered heading out to the east, but instead, they're going to head straight down, putting four cubes onto the board. They could put a fifth one down, but they're worried if they do that and then blue builds one, two, three, four, five, then they may have essentially wasted this cube placement. They could, of course, build over here and start working towards these lucrative things in the east. Yeah, I think they will. They'll go here, though. They like the idea of getting to this position and then maybe working up as opposed to working in that direction. With this build, two new yellow cities were added, so the blue victory point value goes up by two, and now it's our turn. I think 
we should sell a stock and then buy a stock. Black's position is looking pretty good at this point, and we do have one black stock already. It seems like multiple players are pushing black up to this point, so if we make it obvious that we're joining in, they might do that less. And of course, we don't have to take two of a stock when we buy in. You know, purple may just be dead in the water this game. I think let's sell a purple stock and then only buy one black stock. If we bought two, it's possible everybody else might stop helping black. This shows a moderate commitment. We'll see what they think. This also does not increase our overall portfolio size. We currently have nine stocks, and again, the maximum we can score is 15 before we start suffering those 20-point penalties. So I want to be choosy when we take two stocks of a color. All right, we are done, which means the yellow player can go. They're contemplating building blacks so that they could get over here and increase the victory points of black by three. That being said, they did just see us buy into black and somebody else did help build black already. So they know by doing that, they're helping other people. Also, if they do that and increase black's victory points by a lot, it's possible we could all just make a rush on black buying as much of this stock as possible, which means there could be no black cubes by the time the yellow player takes their next turn. They have other investments, and they've decided they're going to build with the Yellow Railroad. That red railroad build has sort of gotten into Yellow's way over here, taking a couple of very easy victory point spots from them. They're going to build with five cubes, and it looks like they are probably not invested in the Blue Railroad, because they've decided to go one, two, three, four, five. So they've essentially cut off the path that I'm sure others were hoping to build with Blue, that puts yellow very close to this two victory point city here. And overall, that increases the yellow railroad's value by two. The blue railroad can, of course, move around like this or try to jut over here. But I'm sure somebody was hoping to grab those with the blue railroad and the yellow railroad snuck in there first. So yellow's value increases by two, which brings it up to five. For their turn, blue is going to sell a purple stock. It appears everybody is getting out of that railroad. And then they're going to buy two stocks. They're contemplating black and yellow. They really like both of the positions for those railroads. They also each have the same number of cubes remaining in their boxes. They're going to go with black, and unlike us, they're going to take two of them. Those will go behind their screen, and now the red player gets to go. They've decided they're going to sell a red stock, and then they're going to actually buy two yellow stock. They like the yellow railroad's current position. That will go into their portfolio, and now we get to go. We do have two yellow, but I feel a lot less inclined to build with yellow now that we know that red at least matches our portfolio and very likely is going to exceed that. Yellow is very close to a bunch of victory point increases, so is black, but so many people have invested in black that it seems like nobody really wants to make that connection because they're going to be helping too many of their opponents. We do have a couple green, I suppose, and this red just hanging out. Red hasn't done very much this game, and it's pretty well positioned to increase value a decent amount. Although if we build red and red starts looking good, maybe other people jump in and they outpace our portfolio. We have this purple, which looks like it might be worthless. We could just sell that to buy something else. There are some pretty good looking railroads. Of course, the more people value a railroad and take its stocks, the less track it has to go onto the map to increase its overall value. I strongly suspect that if we build red, we're helping somebody else more. It's very likely somebody has more than one red stock. I have to admit, I'm kind of talking myself into maybe investing in red. I feel a near certainty that other people have more black stock than us and more yellow stock than us. Green is an interesting point, though. We could invest in that more or we could just build some track with it. Again, I worry that's helping out somebody else too much, but we know that black would help out a bunch of people, and we've seen a decent amount of interest in yellow. I think I've convinced myself to invest in green a little bit instead of building track. Let's go slowly. Let's sell one potentially worthless purple stock and buy just one green stock. There's a lot of tracks over here. I don't really want to spook any other people around the table. I also don't want to overcommit at this point. I just couldn't bring myself to build track on this turn, given the current climate. All right, that finishes our turn, so yellow can go. And surprisingly, they've decided to build with the Purple Railroad. I just sold a stock because I didn't think it'd be worth anything. Purple is here, and it's pretty congested. As you can see, they could head in this direction, but instead, they've decided to build here because two cubes can be on rural spaces. Then they'll go two, three, 
4, and 5. Now, I do want to point out this heavy black line between these two cities. That line disconnects adjacency. So this city and that city are not adjacent. Likewise, these two hexes are not adjacent, and these are not either because of that heavy black line. Now, with this build, the Purple Railroad only connected to one victory point worth of cities, so it's worth one point each instead of zero. It does posture it pretty well for some decent other cities around here, though. All right, yellow is done, which means the blue player can go, and they've decided to build with the Blue Railroad. There's been a bit of a standoff in this area. The Yellow Railroad cut Blue off a decent amount, and they're going to strike. They're going to build with five cubes, and that is exactly enough for them to scoot over here and build into this red city. That is worth three income for that one city. So Blue jumps up from two to five, and it's now pretty well positioned to get to a bunch of other lucrative cities. So far, I think... The blue player is the only player who's been pushing blue. Maybe their initial portfolio gave them quite a bit more than the rest of us. I certainly don't hate seeing that. We have one blue stock. Maybe we'll end up investing in it. We'll just have to see. Now the blue player is done, which means the red player can go. And with the purple railroad suddenly coming alive, they've decided to build with the green railroad. And they are going to build with five cubes. They're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Now, the purple cities are worth two victory points, and the yellow are worth one. So that's two, three, four victory points that have been added to the green portfolio. I'm feeling pretty good about buying that green stock. Of course, the red player did see us do that, so they know we are helping them out. But it's possible they would not have done this if we had bought two of those stocks. They think they're probably not helping us out too much. So green increases from three all the way up to seven, and suddenly the Green Railroad is the most lucrative on the map, and it's very close to a three victory point city. Well, they are done, and they just made buying more green stocks significantly tempting. If we bought these stocks, we'd have to sell something, and I suppose red has been kind of stunted. It did this, which was pretty decent. There's a lot of opportunity for red, but not much has been happening since then. I think let's double down on green. The red player might be a little disappointed to see this, but I guess they maybe could have seen it coming. We're going to sell this red cube, and let's buy two green. We are almost for sure the stock leader in the green railroad now, but considering it's worth seven victory points and these points can never go down, I think that'll be worth it to us. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stocks, so we are still five below the scoring maximum. Okay, we are done, which means the yellow player can go. And they've actually decided to divest from the Black Railroad. They're going to sell one black cube and then buy two green. They really like what the Green Railroad is doing right now. Each of these are already worth seven points. After that, Blue can go and they are going to sell a purple stock. Purple appears to not be dead, but it's still the least valuable of all of the companies. And they'd like two stocks in a different railroad instead. Now, green is tempting. It is all the way up there at seven but they've actually decided they are going to go in with blue and they're going to buy two of these blue stocks. There are still quite a few blue cubes available. Blue is only a couple of victory points back and there is indeed quite a lot of value near the blue railroads line. After that, red is up and they're going to build with the yellow railroad and they are going to build with five track and they're going to build one, two, three, four, five. Purple cities are worth two, yellow are worth one, so that increases the value of yellow by three, which means it is now the most lucrative railroad in the game. There's also only six yellow cubes left in its box. All right, red is done, which means we are up, and we are super invested in green at this point. I think we should build with green. I don't think anyone has a portfolio near ours for this company. So let's build some track. And we certainly need to start up here because these red cities are worth three victory points. So let's go one, two, three. We could build two more times. And I suppose that would get us over here, which is certainly not bad. This is a bit of a gap till we get over here. But yeah, let's go for it. The red cities are worth three. Yellow is worth one. So that increases the value by four. And this jumps green from seven up to 11. Our portfolio is looking pretty good, considering we have five of these cubes. There's only seven green cubes left in its box. After our return, yellow is up, and they've decided they're going to sell a black stock. The Black Railroad was looking so good for a bit there, but times do seem to have changed. They think they'd rather have a different stock. In particular, green is very appealing. It's at 11 points each. Yeah, they're going to take two green stock 
leaving only five cubes in that box. These go into their supply, and now the blue player can go. It looks like they've decided to build blue track. They are going to put five down. And if they use these to race down south, they could potentially connect to Marseille with another one of these builds. Well, I guess anybody could build blue into Marseille. That is worth four victory points, and it would immediately end the game. There's still a lot of blue cubes left over. For now, the blue player wants to build one, two, three, four, five. They're not going to rush south just yet. That will increase the value of blue significantly, though. That's two points worth of yellow cities. And then the purple city is worth two, so that's four extra points for the blue railroad. This bumps it from five up to nine. All right, the red player can go now. And they seem pretty happy that they're able to build more yellow. I think they were a little bit worried other people would buy these out before their next turn. They're going to build with all five of these. They will go one, two, three, four into that red city there. And then with this fifth one, they'll go there. So that's a yellow city. That's three plus one or four more victory points for the yellow railroad. This bumps yellow from eight up to 12 and red is done. There's also a single yellow cube left in that box. You can do a build action as long as there's at least one over here. Of course, somebody might want to buy that considering yellow is looking pretty lucrative. Well, it is our turn. Blue is pretty great. Yellow is very good and green is very good. Our portfolio, honestly, is looking quite good. I think our opponents might be helping us out more than they realize. Now, we do have to do something on our turn, and we could build with the final five green cubes. I think we should probably do that. We are super invested in it, and we'd rather these make our investment better than let other people buy these stocks to get points from all this work that we have done. Yeah, let's build all of these. And unfortunately, I don't think we have an amazing turn with these. We're mostly doing this so we can get a little bit more value out of our current portfolio. We cannot quite reach over here. We need to go one, two, three, four, five. We can't reach that purple city. Over here, we could go one, two, three, four, five, though. I think that's probably the best that we can do. One, two, three, four, five is also pretty decent, although this is the last of these cubes. I think it might make sense to absorb one of these closer cities to the Black Railroad, even though it seems like we've kind of ignored the Black Railroad for quite some time. Yeah, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. That is two yellow cities connected, which increases the value by two to 13. And this is likely the final value of this stock. I say likely because technically somebody could sell orange stock, which would put a cube into this railroad box. And that cube could be built out onto the map. But considering green is so lucrative, I find that hard to believe. I think it's likely that green is done for the rest of the game. We've been focusing on it for a while, and while our portfolio is pretty great, we could have five more scoring stocks. So maybe we should be focusing on stocks a little more. Either way, our turn is done, and we can make that decision on our next turn. This means the yellow player can go, and they've decided to simply sell one black stock to buy one yellow stock. Yellow is worth 12 and black is currently worth three. I really thought black was gonna be worth a ton, but that did not end up happening. Either way, they take this one. They'd love to take a second yellow, but there was only one in that box. This goes behind their screen. And once again, one of the game end triggers is if five out of these six boxes are completely empty. Two are completely empty at this point, but there's quite a few other cubes out here. That being said, as these empty out, these are no longer options to do things, so the rest of these cubes will potentially be taken or placed faster. So, it's the blue player's turn. They've decided they're also going to sell a black stock. It's currently worth three, and it still could go up quite a bit. There's a lot of good stuff over here, but instead, they want to buy two red stocks. There's a lot of good stuff over here as well, and a lot more cubes. They're hoping this gives them an advantage. Of course, they could have bought blue stocks, and blue is worth nine points each right now but they're worried if they do that, everyone else might just jump on it and buy those up as well. And they're hoping, and I think they're hoping to make blue a little bit better while also increasing their options for good things to do. If blue does sell out relatively soon, they like the idea of having a good red portfolio to work on to place more cubes on future turns. They might be making a mistake here, but we'll see how it pans out. Now the red player gets to go and they've decided to build with black. They saw a lot of black get sold back, so they're feeling a little bit better about not helping a bunch of other people. They're going to build with five cubes, and they'll simply go one, two, three, four, five. That is two yellow cities and one purple, so that is four extra points, which brings black up to seven. Blue just sold a black for those reds, but there are a lot of red cubes left, so a lot of potential for that company. 
Well, red is done, which means we can go. We have a lot of green stocks, but we cannot build with green. We've got a couple yellow, but we can't build with yellow either. We do still have a couple of black stocks and a blue. They have about the same number of cubes in their boxes, although we have more black stock than we do blue. That being said, we just saw the red player build with black, so they might build more with black in the future, and maybe we can take this moment to try and increase our portfolio size. We could have up to five more stocks, and the problem for us right now is that all of our stocks are starting to look pretty good. The worst stock that we have is black. Of course, we have to sell something to take two of a different company. I don't think we're selling green. <laughs> uh, yellow is right behind, so that means blue or black. Blue is technically worse off than black right now. Those companies are so similar with their overall situations. I guess blue doesn't really have access to a red like black does, but blue could potentially make it down here to this four-point city, which would also end the game. Yeah, this is a hard decision, but I think we're going to sell a black and take two blue. Oh, I don't know about that. Of course, on our next turn, we could sell a blue and take two black. The only thing we can't do is sell a color and then immediately buy that color in the same turn. Okay, that finishes a quick turn for us. We are up to 11 stocks in our portfolio. And that means yellow can go. They are going to sell a purple stock. They've actually built with purple, but it appears they want to buy into other stocks. They also might not be done with purple. As I said, you have to sell something to buy two things, and having a bigger portfolio is good. Getting as close to that maximum is something you want to do by the end of the game. Of course, that won't necessarily win you the game if you have 15 low-value stocks as opposed to 10 high-value stocks. Now, they have to take one or two stocks in a different company than purple. And considering we just took blue, they're going to take two black stocks. That increases their overall portfolio by one, and now the blue player can go. Well, they just invested in red on their last turn, so I don't think we're surprised to see them build with red. They are going to put five cubes down, and I think they're just going to scoot west, going one, two, three, four, five. They built into three yellow cities, which increases the victory points by three, so it goes up to five. All right, red gets to go, and surprisingly, they're going to be selling a black cube. Once again, you have to sell something to increase your portfolio. I get the feeling they might want to buy back into black later, but by selling this, they can take two stocks. Red is starting to look better. Purple is still very lackluster. Blue is quite good as well, though. Yeah, I think they'll buy two blue stocks. Okay, we are up. And I think let's buy some more stocks. Let's really increase this portfolio. There's good stuff out here. The black cube is just barely worse than the blue cube. And there are a lot more black cubes, actually, because so many have been sold. Maybe, yeah, I'm going to sell a blue cube now. <laughs> and let's take two black. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We've increased our portfolio by one, kind of going back and forth between these two somewhat equal railroads. All right, yellow is up next, and they're selling another purple. Maybe they are officially getting out of the purple game after trying to make something with it. Now they're going to buy stocks and they're going to take two blue. Blue is technically worth more than black at this moment. Those go behind their screen and now blue is up and the stock selling and buying continues. They sell another black and they're going to jump into red again instead of blue. This is the second time they've taken two red. They must have significantly more red than the rest of us at this point. It would not surprise me if they turn around and start building even more with red in the future. That's a bunch of cubes there. Okay, the red player now gets to go. And they've decided to sell a blue to buy two black. It looks like they are also going back and forth between blue and black to increase the size of their portfolio. After that, we get to go. And the situation has not changed very much, at least with regards to the blue and black companies, and those are the two that we can affect. We have seen a lot of red stocks get purchased by the blue player, though, so it's possible they want to try and explode out and make red one of the better companies. It actually has a lot of potential. I haven't really paid attention after they did this build, but it's close to a lot of very lucrative cities. That being said, am I going to sell a black for red? I think I will, actually. We've been doing so much back and forth with black and blue. But nobody's really been moving black or blue recently. That happened, I guess, a little bit ago, but blue has definitely been stalled for a bit. It seems like the blue player, who did most of this blue track building, is now shifting to the red side. And if they have a bunch of red stocks, then they're super motivated to build with red, and they might not mind if we have a couple red as well. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Let's sell a black cube and buy into red. 
At this point, we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stocks in our portfolio. Okay, yellow now gets to go. And I do think the dreams of purple have died. <laughs> they are going to sell one purple and buy two black stocks. This means blue now gets to go, and I don't think anyone's surprised to see them build with the red railroad. There's a lot of good things over here, but in particular, a red city is worth three. So I think they're going to head in that direction. They technically could connect that city right now if they wanted to. There's still eight cubes left in the supply. That would increase the value by three. If they didn't do that, they could instead do this, which would also increase the value by three. I think this is what they're going to do. So the value of red goes up by three, bringing it to eight. And now red can go. They are going to sell a blue stock and then buy two more black stocks. That finishes a quick turn for them. It's back to us. And we're in a similar situation to before. Red is still behind blue, but just ahead of black. There are less cubes now. A lot of red have been snapped up recently. And if there's still red available on the blue player's turn, I bet they're going to connect up to this red city. So I think let's sell this black cube and then buy two more red. That is a much bigger portfolio than we had before. This might start to slow the blue player's incentives in this, but hopefully this will work out for us. We're also increasing our portfolio size. We're up to 14 now, one away from the scoring maximum. Well, we are done, so yellow can go. And they've done nothing but sell purple for, I think, four turns in a row. They had four of these, it looks like. That's probably why they tried to make something happen before they realized it was probably better just to liquidate these to buy two of better stocks at this point in the game. Speaking of that, they are now going to buy two blue stocks. Blue is worth two more than black right now. Of course, black could get over here, which would increase its value by three or four, bringing it to 10 or 11. But that's just one or two ahead of blue. And they are hoping that blue might be able to equal or exceed that before we end the game. And the game end is coming soon. Remember, that happens at the end of a turn if there are five companies that are blank. The game also ends if any company connects down to this blue city, but it looks like that is probably not going to happen anymore. If with this build, blue had built down here, then that threat could have definitely changed the face of this game. Instead, they went up there, and that's allowed us to build our portfolios more. Well, speaking of blue, it is now their turn. And even though we've invested in red a bunch, they are still going to build with it. They're going to build five times, which leaves one red stock remaining. And with these, they are going to connect the red city up and they have two remaining. That's just barely not enough to connect to this two value city, but it is enough for them to go over here. So that is a red and a yellow. Three plus one is four. That brings red from eight up to 12. I'm liking our portfolio. <laughs> okay, the blue player is done, which means the red player can go and they are going to sell a black stock. That lets them buy up to two of a different color and they're going to take two blue. Blue is worth more than black at this point. Black could jump up by a decent amount, but they like the idea of increasing their portfolio size as well. They've gone back and forth between blue and black a few times now, and time will tell just how many more times they get to do that. Okay, we are up. We have a portfolio size of 14, so if we sold something and bought two, that would bring us to the maximum scoring amount of 15. Remember, any cubes over 15 will cost us 20 points at the end of the game, and that maximum does vary with the player count. Well, we have one black, and there are blue out here, and blue is better. I think let's do it. We're going to sell this black, take two blue, and that brings us up to the scoring maximum. Of course, we, again, can go over if that makes sense, although considering the victory points, I don't think it will. We could also sell something and buy one other thing if we think that's going to be worth it based off of the differences in value between those companies. Either way, we are done, so that means the yellow player gets to go now, and they've decided to build. They're going to do so with the Black Railroad, and I think they're going to put all five of these cubes down. They only need four to connect up here and build into a red and a yellow. That's three plus one, or four, plus seven is 11. There is one more that they could build, and they are going to do so. They'll build it here. That finishes their turn, so blue can go, and they are going to sell a blue stock in order to buy the last two black stocks. Okay, red is up, and we are super close to the end of the game here. Three of these are empty, and the other two are super close to being empty. For their turn, they are going to sell a yellow stock. That's one of the best stocks in the game, but by doing this, they can buy two blue stocks. 
it's worth less. However, at nine, this is 18 victory points worth of cubes, and they just sold 12 victory points worth of cubes. So they are still making points by doing this. Okay, now we can go, and we are at our portfolio maximum. So we should certainly not increase its size, but we could sell one thing and then buy one of these other ones. That being said, we could also just build with one of these to try and push the end of the game, especially if we think we are winning. We might be. Our portfolio is very good considering the current market. So yeah, let's just build this red cube here. That's our whole turn. That was the last red cube for the moment. And now yellow can go. And they don't think they're winning right now. They're going to sell a blue to buy this yellow that we just sold. There is only a three victory point gap between these, but they just made three victory points on their turn. After them, blue can go, and I think they've decided to end the game. They're going to build these two out, and the best they can do is something like this. That connects up one yellow city, which adds one victory point, and at the end of their turn, there are five empty railroad boxes, so the game ends immediately. This means we can now move into final scoring, and everyone is going to reveal their portfolios, and this is what we all ended with. We have 15 stocks, and so does yellow. Red has 14, and unfortunately, blue only has 13 stocks. Now, at this point, every stock over 15 would be worth minus 20 points, and now each stock that we have is worth points equal to the value of those companies. Every green stock is worth 13, every yellow and red stock is worth 12, every black stock is worth 11, blue stocks are 10, and purple stocks would be worth one point, except it looks like everybody got out of purple before the end of the game. After adding up these scores, blue has 148 points, red has 157, we have 177, and yellow has 174. I felt like we were winning, and it was honestly closer than I realized. We come in first, yellow is in second, red is in third, and blue is in fourth. Again, if there was a tie, then we'd break the tie going clockwise from the starting player. The person furthest from the starting player would break the tie in their favor. Well, that completes a full playthrough of SNCF France, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, there is a Germany board on the backside of this one. I'm now going to give you a brief overview about the rules changes when playing with the Germany map. The first thing to note is this map is the portrait style versus landscape. The initial cubes and maximum cubes are the same. There is a white city over here with Berlin, and there are multiple blue cities. Now, there are two main rules differences when playing on the Germany map, and the first of these is that there is no starting cubes on the board, unlike the other side where all of the companies had one cube around Paris. Instead, on your turn, you have a third action option you can choose, and this lets you start a new railroad that is not on the map yet. When you do this, you put that railroad onto a city that is at least four hexes away from any other cubes on the map, and there are still six railroads, so up to six times per game, that option can be taken. Now the other rules difference is how the game ends. There are two end game triggers and we check each of them at the end of a player's turn. The first is if there is a railroad on every one of the purple cities on the map. The second condition is we check to see if it's not possible to connect all of the purple cities on the map. In that moment, the game ends. There's a bunch of purples, in particular over here, this is an incredibly lucrative part of the board. Scoring is exactly the same as before, but these two rules differences, where you can start companies out on the map as the game goes, and with the end condition being purple specific, definitely change how this plays compared to the France side of the map. Well, at this point, I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, so that's going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play SNCF. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.